morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earth and Vessels YouTube channel. This is a channel for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. In these times, there are a lot of ideas and, and practices that are being represented unto the people of the world as necessary and good. And I had received a, a question in the comment section about the practice of social distancing and and what Christians would need to understand about this. So I, w I want to consider this question and some other things related to this from the Word of God today. And may the w Word of the Lord be blessed as, as we seek to understand the truth from the only place that truth can be found in the Word of God. You see, Christians find their understanding in the Holy King James Bible. That is the word of God if you speak English, and I'm guessing that you speak English because you're listening to me. So this is where we find our truth, and this is where we find our answers when things are confusing unto us. There is a situation in the world where there is a plague upon the people, and this plague is, has been brought about uh, through the malevolent intentions of, of the wicked in order to obtain power and control. And that is not the point of this video, but it's still true. So when we see these things happening, what do Christians do? Do we start to think that we need to turn back to the ways of Egypt, the, the ways and, and recommendations of science? Or do we when we see fearful things unfolding in the world, do we turn to the Lord our God, recognizing that he who made heaven and earth, he who knew us before we were even formed in the womb, he who is called the end from the beginning, do we turn unto him and seek his guidance? Well, as Christians, of course, that's what we do. We seek the Lord in his word and in prayer. And when distressing things occur, when there are severe changes in the world, rather than look to, to various government authorities or um, health authorities for counsel about what we should do, instead, we turn to the Holy Word of God and we seek our Father in prayer. You see, the Word of the Lord does not change. I want to begin today in Psalm 119. Let's go to Psalm 119. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word today. Let's read here in verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 8. This is one of my favorite passages in the Bible um, because it, it, it's speaking of a principle on which our faith can rely. So in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 8, we read, The grass withereth, pardon me, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Christians have been promised some things. Let's turn to Mark 16. So I want to consider this verse in the light of what we just read, that the word of the Lord endureth forever, and that the word of God is settled forever in heaven. That means that everything that we are promised in the world, in the word, everything that we have been promised in the word is true now, just as it was true before. In Mark chapter 16, let's begin in verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye, this is Jesus Christ speaking to his disciples and Christians are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. We do what he commands. So we, we follow this commandment. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, 
and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. You know, Jesus Christ, when he was on the earth, did not recoil from the lepers. Leprosy is a, a disease that is transferred very easily by close contact with someone who has leprosy. So when you touch someone with leprosy, if you're not uh, abiding in the word of God, and if you're not saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, by being baptized in his name and filled with his spirit, if you touch someone, who has leprosy, you'll get leprosy. And this is verily true of a certain plague that, that is uh, running rampant in the world today. That if you get close to someone who has this illness and you are not in Christ, you will get it. It's highly contagious and there is no flesh on this earth that has immunity to it except for those that are walking in the faith of Jesus Christ. So just to be explicit here, a Christian is someone who has obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what that is, is that first of all, they've heard the word of God and they've believed it. So they've believed the truth that God is one and he sent his only begotten son to redeem all those who would obey his gospel. Jesus Christ, the only begotten son of God was without sin and laid down his innocent life so that those who would believe on his name and obey his gospel could be redeemed from the power of sin and death and thereafter walk in holiness. That is what a Christian is. It's someone who has obeyed Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Repent, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission. Pardon me. Repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Any of you who had any questions about whether or not I think I'm perfect or something, you can laugh with me because I am. Uh, I make mistakes like anyone else. I stumble sometimes. I'm not perfect, but what I am, what I am is a Christian, and I've been saved by grace. And that grace has given me the, the simplicity of heart to receive the word of God like a little child and obey his gospel. And, you know, the Lord is willing to, to bless those who worship him in spirit and in truth, those who receive the kingdom like a little child, those who say, I am nothing, but my father is everything, those who walk in his ways and obey his commandments, verily he fills them with his word. So I am nothing, but my God is everything. And, and so we who are Christians, we rejoice in the truth that we have done nothing for ourselves. It was all given unto us by God. The ability to understand the truth, the ability to hear the word of God and desire to obey it, the ability to see the truth, to see the kingdom of God and desire it, no matter what the price. And really, the first price that everyone pays to get into the kingdom of God, of God is they renounce their own ideas. So ideas of theology that say, oh, but my pastor said that this, or my parents taught me that, or I've always believed that. Letting go of clinging to things that are contrary to the scripture. When someone is born again of the word of God, God, they receive the truth like a little child, and, and that is a gift of God. It's not something that we've given ourselves. That love of the truth is something that comes from God alone. And when he's given us that, we're grateful for it. We realize that God has gives grace unto the humble, 
and he does not give grace unto the proud. So people who are proud in their own self-righteousness and their own religious ways or their scientific ways hate the truth, and they actually fear the truth. When we're talking about the times that we're living in now, when we're reading in Mark 16, particularly verse 18 here, it says, They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So our Lord Jesus Christ did not recoil from people who had leprosy. He touched them, and he healed them. Jesus Christ was not afraid of catching leprosy. These days, people think that that, that was then, and, and something different is now, and that that they have a, a, a weird blend of the ways of Egypt and, and Christianity. So they think themselves to be Christians. They think that they are God's people, but they have not obeyed his gospel. They're not yet redeemed from their sins, and they're not walking in his ways. They're refusing to obey his commandments. So when they come across scriptures like this, that don't agree with their theology, they, they have to make up some kind of excuse not to obey it. So they'll say things like, well, God uses doctors, and there's nothing in the scripture whatsoever that says that God uses doctors. The physicians that, that various people saw in scripture, particularly King Asa and the woman with the issue of blood, in both cases, what happened to people like that was they either died from their diseases and that physicians could not help them, or in the case of the woman with the issue, that she spent all of her money going to physicians and, and she, rather than getting better, she got worse. The truth of the matter is, though, is that what we need to fear in these times is rebellion against God. We need to recognize that the reason why this is happening is the people of the world have turned from their God and they have chosen instead to, to search after sorcery and, and science to heal them, to guide them, to protect them from illness. Verily, the truth is that the people who die from this disease are taking medications for, for sicknesses that don't need medications. Choosing sorcery as your way of healing over Jesus Christ is rebellion against God. So particularly people who are taking various RNA medic medications such as injectable drugs for autoimmune disorders, diabetes, cancer, organ transplants, those kinds of drugs have weakened and made these people particularly susceptible to this virus. So it's not about young and old, although more old people have partaken of this kind of thing in order to maintain their health. That people in the world don't recognize that the, the problem was caused by pharmaceutical companies who are working for the Chinese military in Wuhan, China. That these pharmaceutical companies have been playing with viruses and using them to manufacture drugs. There is a certain technique whereby RNA medications, which are injectable medications that are based on mixtures of DNA, the, the recombining of human DNA with viral DNA and, and, and bacterial DNA and, and various DNA of sheep and, and chicken eggs and so forth that th this genetic tampering is what caused this disease. Whether you think it was accidental or not, that's what caused it. And the reason it was caused was that men of science thought themselves to be very wise and wanted to make a lot of money manufacturing drug treatments for diseases. And this is an example of the rebellion of people in particular, and I'm referring to those who, who claim Christianity, the rebellion of people who claim to be Christians, who do not read the word of God, who don't do what it says, have never obeyed his gospel, and have searched instead 
for healing from physicians because their lying pastors told them God uses doctors. And for that reason, for that reason, because this is an abomination before God, because Jesus Christ is our healer. When we understand that the word of the Lord endureth forever, and then if we turn to Isaiah 53 and verse 5, Isaiah 53 and verse 5 says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2. In case you're saying, oh, well, that was the Old Testament. Although I, I would kind of be a little bit appalled if someone said that, but just in case. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Ye were healed 2,000 years ago. So when Jesus Christ walked on the earth and he came across lepers, he touched them and he healed them. He didn't catch leprosy. He touched them and he healed them. He commanded that his disciples go into all the world preaching the gospel unto people, the good news of Jesus Christ, which is that when you're baptized in his name, you are saved from your sins. This is the good news, the means of salvation. When you're saved from your sins, it means you don't have to walk in your sins anymore. You're not in bondage to sin and death. Rather, after that moment, when you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and your sins are remitted and you're filled with the Holy Spirit of the living God, then you are able to walk in holiness. And the spirit that was in Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the spirit of his Father, is now the spirit of your Father, and that spirit is in you. And you no longer have to fear things like leprosy. You can lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Now, I finally want to just make a comment here. Most people in the world think that they can get a very deadly disease by being too close to people. And as Christians, even though we know that isn't the case, in no way does that mean that we foolishly and arrogantly disregard the fears of those around us. So we don't want to, to say ridicule people, for example, for, for um, practicing the, these um, safety measures and recommendations that come from health authorities, because their fears are very real. Unless they repent of their sins and come to Jesus Christ and are saved in his name, unless they do that, there is a lot to fear. So we want to use wisdom and grace in dealing with people in these times. If someone is afraid that they're going to get sick if you get close to them, then you keep your distance out of respect. Because otherwise, all you're going to do is make that person run from you screaming. It's not going to bear any good fruit. You see, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. So when we're dealing with people in this time, we recognize that they've been deceived by their scientific religion, the religion of science. The religion of science says, trust the doctors, trust the authorities, seek healing from drugs and pharmaceutical companies and medical systems. Put your life in the hands of another human being instead of putting your life in the hands of Jesus Christ. So, when we're speaking the truth to people, we can speak it unto them from six feet away. We can recognize what their fears are and pray for them about that. But verily, if someone is in that mindset 
And they truly believe that if you lay hands on them, that you might cause them to, to get a deadly disease and die, that that's not the time to be putting your hands on them, you see. So when someone, when we're speaking to people now, we can speak to them with love and we can say the truth. That the answer here is not to try to protect oneself and heal via the use of exactly what caused the illness, but rather to repent and seek Jesus Christ to find salvation in him. If someone can hear that word, and then we can put them under the water so that their sins can be remitted and pray for them that they receive the Holy Spirit of the living God, then, then they will understand. You see, people who are living in rebellion are blind. People who have relied for their whole life upon systems of witchcraft and sorcery are now believing the witchcraft that is all over the internet and all over the news, saying that the only way to protect yourself from this thing is to hide in your house and maybe even get a gun to shoot someone who might knock on your door and intrude upon the sanctity of your home. This is not how Christians conduct themselves. We don't have to fear the lepers. If someone comes to us and says, I'm sick, I don't know what to do, we could say, may I lay hands on you and pray for you? Because Jesus Christ can heal you. And if they say yes, we can do so. But verily, the truth of the matter is, is that most people these days have been given over to a spirit of rebellion and fear. Christians fear the Lord. Christians understand that with the fear of the Lord, we find wisdom. If we go to Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10, we read, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Christians, those who truly have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ in sincerity, have a knowledge of the holy. When you're filled with the spirit of the living God, no pestilence is going to affect your flesh. You will be able, that holiness and that light shines forth from you, and there is no room at all for any darkness or any pestilence to exist. So we don't have to fear. We do, however, recognize that a lot of people are fearful, and we want to look at that with compassion and not attack it with pride. Let's go now to Proverbs chapter 4, and I'm going to close with this. Proverbs chapter 4, and let's begin in uh, verse 18. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Yes, we're living in troubling times, but for a Christian, what that means is this is an opportunity. As many people are beginning to question everything, they've lost perhaps their job, their, their uh, participation in education, Maybe they're losing family members. Maybe they've lost a good deal of money. Maybe now they're holed up in their house and listening to the internet and only receiving emails or phone calls. The, in times of crisis, when people uh, are beginning to question everything that they've relied on in the past, it's an opportunity for them to hear the word of God and for that seed of truth to bear fruit in their life. So those of us who are Christians, who walk in the light, and we don't hide our light, this is an opportunity for us to shine the light of truth into their heart so that they can come into the kingdom of Jesus Christ and be saved, you see? But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. 
The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words. Attend to the word of God. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. This is what Christians do. We abide in the word of God. When we're abiding in the word of God, then we are given understanding and wisdom that can bless those around us. If we don't do that, we'll become withered. But we, when we abide in the word of God, when we keep the word of the Lord in the midst of our heart, then we have nothing to fear. Let's read on. For these words, so it says, For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. So the word of the Lord is life unto those that find them. These words that are written in the King James Version of the Holy Bible are the word of God. It's the words of God. It's his commandments are for our benefit, for our blessing. When we obey the commandments of Jesus Christ as written in his holy word, we are blessed. We find salvation. We find light. We find hope. And when we do that, when we keep the words of God in our heart, then that's what comes forth from our mouth. And it can bring forth life in other people. Verse 23, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. The way that we keep our heart is we walk in humility, knowing that God gave us salvation when we didn't deserve it and now we are his ministers now we have been given the word of truth to speak unto others many won't receive it but many will these times are difficult for people in the world but they are an opportunity for christians i pray the word of the lord has blessed you today feel free to email me if you like or to comment in the comment section below and, and may we all abide in the word of God and find life and light therein, that that is then what proceeds forth from our mouth. Out of our heart will then issue the word of God, the same word of God that brought forth life in us, might bring forth now, presently, in the lives of those around us who refused to hear before. May God bless you, my sisters, as you continue in the word of God, and I remain here for you. Amen.